amazing. From the description that your client gave you, this must be your target. The rigger, Thorvald Enstadt. You can see him waving and pounding on the plastic of his cell door, but from where you're standing, the scene is eerily silent. It looks like he's had a rough go of things. One of his eyes has been blackened, and his lower lip is split wide open. Not particularly surprising, given the temperament of his captors. The well, I can see the black eye, but I can't really see the split lip, to be fair. Eh. Oh well. The only incongruous element is his outfit. He's decked out head to toe in patched black riding leathers. A pair of oversized studded combat boots shine in the halogen glare of the cell's lightning panels. He does have quite the awesome beard. Hey, hey. Nah, he's just better than yours. Shut up. <laughs> From his style of dress, it's obvious that this dwarf is not a corporate employee. He's a Shadowrunner. Alright, Dietrich. I uh, think uh, Yusatsu just gave you a compliment. You do female combat locks? No, man, I'm here for Varen's tender manly voice. Oh my. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Dietrich. Uh, this isn't some corporate goon, boss. Look at him. He's one of us. Mm. Glory shudders but holds her silence. I do love Glory. Dietrich lays a hand on the bare metal of Glory's shoulder. She flinches, but only barely. When he speaks, his voice is soft. There, but for the grace of God, eh, love? Dietrich, don't hit on Glory, she's mine. <laughs> eh, all is fair in love and war. Gotta be careful, I have an army of rats. I can summon the spirits from the earth, from air, water, and poison. Well, mine are slot pit rats. Nothing can beat them. We shall see about that. Won't be love. And don't call me love. Alright, love. I'm, I'm for glory only. Speaking of, Glory's eyes remain fixed on the rigger, who continues to hammer impotently, uh, impotently on the door of his cell. Something like that. Uh, everything's falling down over here. By the way, everyone, isn't it nice and quiet now that you don't have Iger here with a giant clitoris constantly falling out of her pants? I really hope she bought some nice underwear that keeps that clitoris in because it became very distracting. Just saying. Alright, and let's do a save. Shut up, Erinor! Glory is fucking fine, and she's coming up here to me. To sleep with me and only me. You've tread on dangerous ground here, Erin Uh We should probably tell you that uh, pretty much every female character in this universe uh, is lesbian. Uh, at least the ones we run into because I made them a lesbian. There's one you didn't make, a lesbian. True. True. The door slits open and a stench of stale sweat assaults your nostrils. Instead steps forward, his bloody lips curled into a smile. The soles of his boots squeak on the polished tile floor. And um, Trev, you be careful with that love talk as well. <laughs> ah, we all call you laugh. And yes, you said so. A clit jockstrap is exactly what I gonna eat. Exactly, yeah. Alright, so this is also a dwarf. Should maybe do a little bit other kind of my Scottish accent. Maybe. Uh, uh, he, he does seem to have quite a deep voice. Like. Oh, free at last, thank Christ. His smile <laughs> widens into a sickly grin. Tar stained teeth shiny, shine wetly in the light. Didn't think I wore in the rescue. Whoever sent you, thank him for me. Yeah, I, I think my character is, uh, is is like, a job is a job, I need to finish this just real quick. I only care about my team. Yeah, by the way, we do need the money. Indeed, so kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Say goodnight. Eh, sorry, buddy. 
One punch to the face. <laughs> Fisting. <laughs> yes. Fist him to death, Varen. Ah, uh, you won't have to tell me twice. Exactly. Oh, uh, please don't tell me you, you wasted the special loop on him. Ah, uh, no, that's only for special occasions. Like Good. this. Do you see those basilics over there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you guys can't see, but the face he just made. Priceless. Fucking priceless. <laughs> And that lifeless body lies crumpled <laughs> on the ground. His mouth is frozen open in a silent scream. Whoa, da. Whoa, da. That was cold, Chief. At the very least, you gotta talk to the guy. He was a shadow runner, one of us. Yeah, so, that's it. Sometimes you have to be called uh, Blitz. Yeah. But uh, I still really like Blitz. Still really like him. So fucking cool. All right, let's get out of here and hope there's no more fights that I have to go through. Yeah. New objective: exit the building. You have to tell me twice. Get out of here. Oh, remember to save me, by the way. Ah oh, shit. <laughs> the leader of the group is an elf with Asian features. He's obviously a vet job. The bands of corded muscle that bulge out under his sleeves have a distinctly store-bought look to them. When he speaks, his voice comes out in a gravelly rumble. I'm just gonna interfere here. Uh, again, being a noob, that's a vet job. I don't know um, what that is. Probably a clone. Uh, okay. Or maybe just someone who has some uh, biochemical stuff done to his body. Alright then. Company man. My, my, the intrepid Varen Kimbolt. With no rigor in sight, I must admit, I am surprised. Because that's just said, uh, rest in peace. Mm. <laughs> yeah, roll the next two of us. Who the hell are you? Herr Fuchs sends us to check up on you. Given his recent troubles with Shadowrunners, this should not come as a surprise. The company man smiles and nods slightly. I shall return to him and report your task completed to my satisfaction. Good day. All right, so I guess probably we could uh, we could have let that guy out, but then we would have to fight these guys. Ah, uh, I think you're right. Well, at least we're getting paid. Yes. We need those fifty thousand millions. Exactly. <laughs> Is he a cyborg? Maybe. I'm not sure. Exit. Exit, go, get out of here. I don't want to be here anymore. I remember to save! Oh, uh, I don't know if you're still around, Erinor, but one thing about Varen is that he's not very good at remembering to save his games. Um, look at his uh, Hitman playthrough for evidence <laughs> on that. Baron is currently shaking his head at me. <laughs> uh. Disappointment and rage. <laughs> Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? We were in a lab. Now we're not anymore. We are going back to the Kreuz Bazaar, our home hub. Yay! And I'm going we're to stock to up on med kits and trauma kits. Yes, where Dante is awaiting us, the cute little pooch. Mm -hmm. And Amstel and Iger. Use that too. Oh yeah! <laughs> I'm curious to see if she managed to get the jock strap to work. The mm -hmm. clip jock strap. It's what the many from System Shock 2 say. Ah, all right. <laughs> so, by the way, Yusatsu, thank you for coming up with the clip jockstrap. I'm probably going to use that from now on. Your PDA rings and the face of your fixer, Paul Amsel, appears on screen. Vern, 
I have new information to discuss about the estate. Please come as soon as you can. Alright then, Amsel. I'll be there in a bit. Oh, game freezes. Please don't freeze on me. Alright, save game. I was about to say, oh, it's freezing on mine, but, oh, uh, wait. <laughs> Alright. And I have 12 karma. I could do lots of that. Yeah, level up. Damage is resistant to physical damage, raises his chance to take reduced damage from attack. Yeah, we're going to take some more body damage because I am the tank in front, fighting everyone. So, fisting everyone. Yes. And Yasatsu, you have just um, well, you haven't done anything bad. You've just contributed to this insane Shadowrun playthrough. <laughs> So take it as a positive. Yes. Uh, not going for charisma now. I'm going to just put it all in combat. So it's in close combat. Uh, I might be stupid here, but haven't we needed a little bit extra in uh, intelligence as well? Uh, that could also work, but I, I'm going to focus now on, uh, on okay. just my damage. Yeah, that's fair. Because, just... because we did some... Uh, we already did some stat increase with um, non-combat Intel... stuff previously, so... Yeah, I know that we did. Um, it was just, you know, regarding... Uh, Conversations, options, and yeah, stuff sure. like that. I know, but I, I think we're mostly in, in, a, uh, in a combat period now, so I need to do that first. Yeah, uh, I think you're right about that, because it's all about the side quests at the moment. <laughs> yes. Alright. Give me medical supplies. Uh... He has advanced medkits! Huzzah! <laughs> We can get pineapple flavored lube! Alright, all the advanced medkits. He's no longer a basic bitch. How fucking and nice. And also some trauma kits. Uh, is that so? From what I've been able to gather, you can use intelligence for decking. And also different conversation op uh, topics, or options rather, when speaking to people. Um, I don't know if you want to comment on that, Varen. Uh, with intelligence, yeah, um, it's mostly used by deckers or riggers for, and as you said, it's used for decking or for um, uh, drone rigging. But it can also be used in certain com in so certain conversation options. So that's why I sometimes increase it. And I well, have so much medical stuff now. So many advanced medkits. Well, sure. The thing is, uh, Varen needs his uh, scented and flavored lube when he does his special fisting for the special enemies. Exactly. Because it powers his fists. Mm. And before only having the basic med kits, there was only basic lube, and that wasn't very much fun for him. Yeah, flavorless lube. Mm. No, doesn't go for the little Varen Kimbold dwarf in Sharon. Really doesn't. Right. Um, and last time, uh, to to the to those of you who are uh, here, um, you will recall that we actually went to have another chat with one of my favorite uh, characters in the game, <laughs> the uh, drug addict. Uh, that was quite fun to return to her. Mm -hmm. I have to say, because she is so fucking funny. Um. But yeah, that's. I think it was episode five we encountered her the first time. Yes. Yeah. So if you watch episode five, you'll see the full conversation with her, and it was actually quite funny, <laughs> especially because the backstory I gave. All of a sudden, the game was kind of playing into that a little bit. <laughs> For some reason, it just all all of it fit together. And we have Dante. 
Alright. Oh, I'm so Aww. And he made a little trick. And he said a wolf! Yes, he did. I love her. I love our little pooch. <laughs> Saints Row the Third has a gang called the Deckers who use future-like tech and light clothing. Yes, they are a ripoff of Shadowrunners. Well, maybe the people who made Saints Row just really love, you know. Oh yeah, the the, the, there, there's a lot of references in Saints Row Three and Four. Hmm. Oh. How do I still have like half a glass left? I do not know. I am so efficient with my drinks drink today. <laughs> Alright, Amazon. Yeah. Vern, welcome back. I have news for you. In your absence, I have been looking into the Harfeld Manor. Whatever Feuerschwing is up to, it is both large-scale and well-funded. I've uncovered a money trail leading from holding companies all over the world to an offshore fund with a dummy address. Can I just say, I thought you said large-scale and not scale. <laughs> 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 I just had to think for like a second when you said that, I was like, what the fuck? Especially because I did not yet have the dialogue up on my screen, so I was just like, what the fuck is he talking about, Kale? <laughs> I was like, oh wait, it's probably scale. Text pops up, yeah, it was scale, large scale. <laughs> yes, yes, actually Fireswing's entire plan is to make large amounts of kale and conquer the world through that. Maybe she has turned vegetarian? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Right. Mm. From there, all of that freshly laundered money flows directly into the Harford estate. How much money are we talking about here? Alright, bye Shadow. Have a good one. Aww, gonna miss you Shadow. Have fun! I can't name an exact figure, but we're talking about a lot of money. In the millions of Nurian, most certainly. Whatever the firewing is planning, she has access to all the resources she'll need to carry it out. Alright, so the dragon has money. This isn't exactly new information. The Harfeld man reeked of wealth. Also, she is a dragon, and they tend to love having a lot of wealth around them. Yes. True, but at the very least, this information helps to establish where all of that money is coming from. I will continue digging into this while you and the team tackle your next run. With luck, I will have more information to share upon your return. Sounds good, Paul. One last thing, Vern. Melit was able to restore the readable services of one of Green Winter's DVDs. If you'd like to take a look, you will find it sitting beside the player. I'll check it out. Very good. Melit is still working on the other DVDs from the bundle. Many of them are extensively damaged and getting anything of them is providing to be quite a chore. She told me that she'll be in touch and when she makes any headway. Thanks, Paul. It's porn! <laughs> it's porn! <laughs> well, and Yosatsu, it's actually a female smog, I think. Although, if she goes, I am fire, I am death, then we know where the inspiration comes from. Yes. Uh, by the way, it has to be porn, because remember, when you found the DVDs, some of them were actually stuck together with some sticky stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did I just make a choke? Not yet. <laughs> but, but like, I, I, was, I was just drinking it, and then you were like, oh, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> dragon? No, there's not going to be any dragon porn, Yuzatsu. Why not? At least I hope not. Oh, we don't know what Winters went was into. Like he could be into anything, you know, from lesbian to piss porn to cream pie to dragon to furry, interracial, whatever. Go on, keep going. <laughs> Have you never read all the categories on Pornhub? Just going down to see how many there actually are? I don't expect that so closely, but okay. <laughs> Although I have seen amputee ones. Yeah. Well, I know in the 1920s in Berlin there was a special kind of prostitute called the grasshopper. Uh, those were basically handicapped uh, women. Again, uh, hunchbacks, amputees, and women with scars on their face or their body or something like that. Hmm. They were called grasshoppers, so that, that was a special kind of prostitute. Alright um, then. 
I can't exactly see the sexual value in those because I would not be turned on by that. However, I can definitely see the artistic value of that. 1920s history with Moth Angel. This is what you're all coming for, isn't it? <laughs> well, that and the lesbian subplots. That too. Alright, let's watch some DVDs. <laughs> Interracial dragon furry porn. <laughs> <laughs> just, just combine it all into one big bowl. Exactly. All right. Oh, by the way, I finally managed to watch uh, the last season of South Park, and the piss porn. Uh, uh, that one is fucking hilarious. Uh. Poor Jared. <laughs> poor, poor Jared. <laughs> and then I just love that I and Kyle in the background just casually walking in on them, just be like. What the fuck are our parents doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright, second DVD. Play track one. It's going to go bless for me because agreement as appears on the screen. And let's take our time with them this time. So yes. it wasn't too much fun last time when we had to rush through them all. Yeah, but that was also because I was dying. Yeah. And I also took over for a, a little while, so... Winter's got a funny female voice at some point. <laughs> nah, Varen Fisting Dwarf is the main source. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, it's good to know that you remain the the main star of the show. At least someone agrees. <laughs> you're, tr you're trying to take over my show and I'm not okay with this. Well, to be fair, you have your own shows outside of this. I'm only part of the Shadowrun. Yes, but like soon you'll slowly be creeping into them as well, and then it suddenly it will be the Moth Angel show. Well, I'm fabulous. <laughs> it's not my fault. It's just something I am. I'm just fabulous. Like, like you'll be the personality on screen, and I'll be like silent here playing the game. <laughs> no, I wouldn't go that far. We're a team. Remember? That that does my heart good. Oh, <laughs> he looked very happy for a second there. <laughs> like all the rage finally drained from his face. <laughs> he was like, yes, finally something positive in this playthrough. <laughs> all right. All right. As I said in my last recording, I've been having trouble finding hard facts and fire swing. So I thought I'd open up things a bit. Let's see what the rumor mill has to say. The screen jumps and Winter reappears in a different location. He is now clutching a mug of soy cat in both hands and there are bags under his eyes. Well, that was enlightening. Assuming that any of it was true, that is. So for the past five hours, I've been poking around some of the crazier fringe theories, theories related to dragons and the COX. As a reminder, the COX is an irradiated wasteland between France and Germany. It got zoned off back in 08, after the Catamon GAO... J G A U reactor reactor meltdown. <laughs> Remember your alphabet. <laughs> anyway, there are all kinds of rumors floating around about the place. I've heard stories about a walled city in there that operates on a survival of the fittest, kill or be killed basis. Sort of like a nightmare version of Berlin, all of the anarchy, but none of the stability that the F state provides. The radiation poisoning, cancer, and mana pollution are just the icing on the cake. So when Adrian helped the Luftwaffe shoot Feuerswing down, she crashed into the SOX. That much is well known. What isn't as well known are all of the modern day myths that have arisen about her since. And tonight, I've heard an earful. I chatted up a girl who claimed to be a ghost rat. I think that's you, Moth. Well, what can I say? I did some spells with the rats, and one thing led to the other, and... It was a very interesting night. I'm just put it that way. Wait. <laughs> That's a smuggler that operates in the SOX. She told me about a dragon cult called the Disciples of the Cleaning Fire. Apparently, these cultists worship some sort of radioactive ghost dragon. Could be Fireswing, or it could be nothing. But it's worth digging into, all the same. Another thing that my little ghost rat told me, the popular rumor in the SOX is that Fireswing's astral form was... I guess you'd say mutated by all of that background radiation. Some of the glow punks out there said that she's shed her body like an old coat. Others say that she's trapped, doomed to languish as an intangible radioactive ghost. 
I don't know how much credence to give any of this. After all, I don't have any proof that my ghost rat is even a ghost rat. She might be, but then she could also be a run-of-the-mill glowpunk. Or maybe she's just yanking my chain, and she's never been to the SO SOX at all. Who knows? Well, it's food for thought anyway. I don't know whether the thought of some radioactive ghost dragon is any scarier than a genuine dragon is, but it's interesting all the same. Now the big question is, will any of this get me any closer to fighting Angie? I'm gonna go out on a limp and say no, but you never can tell. All right, next track. Uh, by the way, uh, you said suggests that the Varen and Moth show. I would not call this the Varen and Moth show, but uh, when we are going to play Don't Starve Together, are you going to record that? I wasn't I'll planning stream on streaming, I thought it was just going to be a private game for us. Yeah, but if you were, I wouldn't mind. And that would be, in my opinion, the Varen and Moth show, if that was going to be one, because then we'll we would both be playing and have an equal part in the game. Alright. Just food for thought. I don't mind it being private, I don't mind it being streamed. Whatever you want to do. Uh, I, was, I was just thinking, like, well, I could stream it, but I was just thinking about could be just be a, a game between us two. Yeah, whatever you feel comfortable with. Whatever you want to do. Well, I because I'm, I'm not gonna stream it, but if you decide to on your end, eh, fine. Well, I'll, I'll think about it, but uh, I'm not planning to. Okay. Alright, play tech two. Yes. Right. One of these has to be porn. <laughs> or maybe he recorded this over some porn. Like suddenly he's talking, like so, and then oh, and then suddenly. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> exactly. Or it's like in Fight Club where it's just like a slight second of a frame of a penis. Yeah. They're just like, what the fuck is that? Ah, whatever. Hmm. Ah. Alright. Let's continue thinking outside the box. After the Dragonfall, the great dragon Keltenstein came flying into the SOX to rescue the Firewing. But it was driven off, some say killed, by Lofweer and Nibbleher. So, what if there's another dragon involved in all of this? Winters grabs his thick, leather-bound tome from a shelf behind him, licks a finger, and begins to leaf through it. <laughs> Alright, let's run down the list of major dragons that could be helping her. First, there's the Golden Worm, Lofweer, the CEO of Seder Croup, and quite possibly the single most dangerous being on Earth. Lofweer's a local boy, so he'd be in a position to help Firestring. He certainly has the financial capability to help her. He could send a small army into the SOX if he wanted to. So he's definitely got the means, but I can't see how he'd have the motive. He actively prevented the Fire swing, Firewing's rescue back in 2012, after all. Same thing is true for Nibblehair, so let's scratch the both of them on the list. Uh, by the way, Yosatsu, even if the, the Don't Start Together game is just going to be me between me and Varen, um, we'll probably mention it at some point during the stream. Anyway, you know, just talk about it and also to let you guys know if we think it's any good and worth picking up, I think. Yep, fine. We've got Aiden, the great Sirish. He's operating out of Turkey. By all accounts, he's not a fan of Lofweer. They're actively competing for territory in the Middle East. So I suppose that could be considered motive. Reviving the Firewing may, may cause problems for the Golden Worm. But would he risk a war with Seder Krupp by straying into Lofweer's territory? Again, I don't think it's likely. There's Celadir, out in Wales. He's pretty heavily invest invested in Transy and Neuronet, so he's got the money. But he's too busy dealing with the BTL killer scandal the Transys is going through out in London to get his claws dirty in the SOX. Dunkelzan, out in the UCAS. 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 <laughs> no, this is a waste of time. The more I think about it, the more convinced I am. The Firewing is acting alone. Dragons don't cooperate unless they absolutely have to. After all, why bother making nice with your equals when you've got an entire planet full of pawns at your disposal? They don't need to work together, they have, to, they have us to exploit. I think they're describing you, Moff. <laughs> well... 
I'm not saying that I have a bit of dragon blood in my family, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, we definitely know that I have some vampire in me. That's debatable. Not with my skin and extreme sensitivity towards the sun. Mm, <laughs> While this track does, does load, it's clearly corrupted. The screen fills with a meaningless stream of text. Uh, and penis pops up for a second and disappears again. <laughs> See, there was porn on one of them. <laughs> right, play track four. This file is partially garbled. You can recognize a few words here and there, but they're interspersed amidst a solid block of corrupted text. Vauclair and still my big bro searching. Leave it up for a second longer this time so I can also get a chance to. Oh, the last one, there wasn't any of that. Yeah, anymore. I know, it's just that it skipped by so quickly, I didn't really get a chance to actually see it. So my big bro <laughs> searching for Firewing, swear to, uh, swear to ass. I will find you! <laughs> it's the last. Uh, old. And, uh, not getting any close. I'll swear to Ash. And who know who. Hmm. Dragopire. <laughs> what is Dragopire? Uh, mix between dragon and vampire. Ah. I should have seen that. I'm an idiot. <laughs> now you're just very engaged in the game at the moment. This file is corrupted. This screen fills with a meaningless assortment of AC, AC, ASC two characters. Yeah, <laughs> this you won't be able to get any out of this. Yeah, fair enough. Play track six, six. Yeah. The screen goes black, and the same digital time that you heard on the Dragonfall DVD plays again. Crackle of static fills the air, followed by that same non-familiar electronic wane. A few minutes later, the display goes live. Oh, it's for Claire. <laughs> do my French voice again. <laughs> okay. Prepare for some cringe, everyone. Vauclair looks haggard. His eyes are heavily bagged and bloodshot. And his hair is must. He holds a cigarette in an unsteady hand. Hurry me. It's me. I can't sleep. I don't know where you are. Out having fun? No doubt. Maybe flirting with one of those unattainable beauties that you're always chasing. He tries on a smile, but it quickly disappears. He takes a drag on a cigarette. Of course he has a cigarette. He's French. That's good. I want you to live a, live a pleasant, normal life. After all, one of us should. Vauclair rubs his eyes. I... I can still smell the smoke, Hermie. It's almost a year later, and I can still taste the stench of burning corpses. When I sleep, I can hear the sirens and the screams. There is no sound in this world as horrible as a burn victim's screams. The doctors would call this PTSD, I'm sure. They'd have me in therapy, maybe dose me up on SSRIs, like they do to our veteran soldiers. He chuckles and takes another drag. Quite a story for the tabloid, the Green Dragon Slayer, or Adrian Vauclair. Mentally incapable of wrestling with his own demons. He shakes his head. No. No, therapy for, no therapy for me, and certainly no medication. I have a reputation to live up to, however poorly deserved it is, and however little I want it. He pauses, stops at his cigarette. The dragon is still alive, Hermie. Of that I am certain. One day I will find her, and then perhaps I'll be able to sleep through the night. The display goes back, and the background line fades away. Eject the DVD. Ah, that was fun. Finally, my French voice. <laughs> and all the cringe in the world. Uh, by the way, I took the opportunity to pimp your ass out some more on the Discord channel. So keep the loop ready. <laughs> Alright everyone, get on! <laughs> <laughs> it's times like these I wish people could actually see, you know, the cameras. Because <laughs> that was glorious. <laughs> Let's check the missing computer. He just slapped his own ass, by the way, and got up and showed his ass to the camera. Getting ready for... You love it. You know you do. Yes. All the pimping out. <laughs> I check shipments. 
If you value new hardware coming into Christ Bazaar, we need to talk. One of my weapon shipments was hijacked by the local gang. I can promise 500 new yen. And if you can copy the shipment, I'll have some new gear on the shelf. Come see me for details. Ooh. This is some personal stuff. Um, by the way, did we get paid for the other one? I think so. Claim yeah. pay- Ah, here we go. Claim payment. There we go. I'll get a room, you two. <laughs> well, soon that will happen, Trev. In a week. In a week. Or rather, Varen will be sleeping at a dorm. You just had, so you had to ruin the the mystique, didn't you? Yes, I did. Slut Inquisitor of Aaron von Kimbolt. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I want. I want that name. I will keep. I'm keeping that name. I'm. I'm just writing it down, people. Yes. I am keeping that name. That is my official slut pit name now. Slut Inquisitor uh, Varen von Kimbolt. Yes, uh, by the way, Varen, there is a big upside to you be actually sleeping in the dorm with other people. Orgy. Good point, but um, I actually don't, <laughs> I don't have a dorm room, I actually have a single room. Because I couldn't book it with the dorm room for some reason. Ah, weird. So I, ju I, I, had, had, I had to get a single. Eh, fine. I'm probably going to go down there this weekend just to make sure that I actually know the route. A hundred percent. But, yeah. Slot Inquisitor Varen von Kimbolt. There we go. But yeah, it's going to be fun. You're coming here. It's almost this a better name than Lord Admiral Ravensburg. It's a lot better than that. <laughs> I'm just Lady of Rats. I have formerly been known as the Bride of the Pit. Huh. And usually people just call me Moth, which is fine. I like being called Moth. But am I allowed to say your real name when I when I'm there? In Denmark, yeah, sure. All right. I think that would but, I think I think it would be a weird like, especially if your friends come over, that I would call you Moth. Yeah, I'm probably just gonna keep calling you Varen because I have I still can't pronounce your real name. <laughs> we'll work on it. Yeah. I know, I know how you want me to pronounce it, and I can hear it in my head, but actually articulating it? That's a fucking bitch. Yeah, it's, it's, it's different sounds than you're used to. Yeah, exactly. Alright. An excellent job, Varen Kimbolt. You are a credit to your profession, and I would not hesitate to hire you again. Your fee will be transferred to your account immediately. A moment later, a second message pops into your inbox, your payment details. Yay! Payment and his name is Fox. Deductions for crew salary. Ammunition and resupply costs, automatic deduction for Alice funds, the minus set to Varen's account, 250. 2500. Alright. Hmm. Alright. Did we seriously only get 2500 for that? No, two ta 20, yeah, 2500, it's all we, we got. Because the rest of the money went to the rest of the team, um, resupplies. And then the actual funds that we're trying to collect. Mm. And you clicked past it a little bit quickly, so I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, so, sorry. I couldn't read anything. That was information for me. You don't need to worry about that. Don't be such a chauvinist. <laughs> Yasatsu is saying, Mothra, coolest monster. Yes, she is. Although, I think the best Godzilla monster is Gigan. I'm not really into the Godzilla lore, so... Guy Gan is just a hodgepot of a monster. It's, it's, he, has, he has hooks for arms, he has a saw blade on his belly, and he has a laser eye. Eh, sounds awesome. It went to the slut funds. <laughs> <laughs> Those are very important funds. Complications yet was fixed. I really need to get a haircut. <laughs> like you can't, you guys can't see it in the right now, but in the camera, I keep playing with my hair because I really need a haircut. Uh. And it's driving me mad. My vanity can't handle this. You're so vain. Oh, I'm so vain. I probably think this song is about me. You're so vain. 
<laughs> That's the only line I know of that song. Mm. That's the only one you really need to know. Yeah. Luca Dua. Hmm. This looks like a fancy gentleman. Does. Oh wow, the portrait. Oh my fucking god. So yeah, are wearing Kimball, eh? The late money for Shameless replacement? He looks you up and down the nuts. Good! You left the part! <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Okay, we'll have to stick with that voice then. <laughs> Let me get right to business. My organization would like to retain your services for the indefinite future. But first, we're asking you to go on a trial run. An audition of sorts. To prove that you are the right man for the job. Your voice is even better. Assuming that you complete this trial to our satisfaction, I will then offer you a variety of simple tasks. All of these should be achievable in the course of your everyday business. You won't need to get out of your way to expose yourself to much unnecessary risk. For each task that you complete, you will be rewarded one handsomely, and there will be a bonus if you finish them all. So if I picked your interest, will you accept our offer? That's fucking amazing, dude. Mm -hmm. Ah, hair everywhere. I'll get a shaving machine and just go. No, I like my hair to be long. It just needs a bit of a cut. Because it's not really in the style at the moment. It's just getting long and in the way. Hmm. So, okay. What, who, do you how, hmm. who do you work for and how, do you, how did you know where to find me? I have a feeling the voice uh, threw off uh, our little dwarf Baron a little bit. He was like, what the? F uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> My organization knows everything worth knowing in Germany, including the small pawn that is Berlin. It is in our best interest, however, to remain unknown to the world at large. For the time being, that's all you need to know. What does this audition pay? I can offer you 1500 new yen, but only if you complete the full audition, the run and post-run interview to our satisfaction. If you fail to perform to our expectations, you will receive no pay and no further offers at work. Sure, I need the money. Very good. Yep. Assuming that your performance in the audition passes muster, I can foresee a long and fruitful business relationship between us. Sure, I'm in. Good. Very good. Now, on the task at hand, there is a man named Alash here. He is a senior manager at Hermes Eurocom, a respected figure in his community. My organization also suspects him of working with pro-corporate extremists. These people are actively working to undermine the flag state and pave the way for a corporately controlled Berlin. My organization has no more desire to see Berlin fall to the corporations than you do. However, we are hesitant to act on our suspicions without proof. This is where you come in. Uh, want me to beat the proof out of, out of him? With some fisting? <laughs> Baron takes out the special look from his back pocket. Raises his eyebrow slightly and looks very eager. Yes, this thing, mm -hmm. please. <laughs> he chuckles. I like your initiative, but no, nothing so crude as that. You will meet me with Aww. the team that I've arranged for you, and with their assistance, you will plan surveillance de devices in this apartment. Baron looks very disappointed and mm. quietly puts the loops back in his pocket. <laughs> Take the U-Bahn to the Frankfurt Tour and go alone. The rest of your team will meet you there. Sounds simple enough. For a man of your talents, it should be. The moment that you board the train to Frankfurt the Tor, your test will begin. I would advise you to bring what you need in terms of medical supplies and ordnance. Once you embark on your trial run, there will be no turning back. After you have planted the devices and verified that work, come back to me. There will be a brief interview, a post-mortem on the run, if you like, and assuming that I am satisfied with what I hear, I will pay you your first stipend. Then we will discuss our future options. Best of luck, Varen Kimbolt. We will be watching. <laughs> Is that the thing? Oh man, fisting the heretics. <laughs> I'm all up for that. And someone is smoking a hookah. Well, it is a Turkish restaurant, so... Yeah. Smoking okay. Random song. I think she's completely lost in her own world now. Yes, you have lost me to my mind. 
Well, it had to happen to someone. Yeah. Mm, maintenance worker. Hey, buddy. S sorry to bother you, but, but I, I could use some help over here. You, you want to make a little extra scratch? Shouldn't take too long. Uh, he kind of looks like he's addicted to something. The way that he's standing, like, I need a fix. <laughs> sure, what's sure? What's the problem? Well, m m my, me and my buddy Victor got called in from the next key is over. Something's wrong with the sewers around here. Your local plumbers and mechanics are all useless. Vic and I talked to them, tried to give him to get... Tried to get them to give us the maintenance schedule for your sewer pumps. They just scratched their heads at us. Said that the machinery down there just took care of itself. My best guess is that your pumps have shut down. Happens from time to time without proper maintenance. When the pumps shut down, the waste start piling up. And it's causing some pretty major overflow problems downstream. Oh, um, have fun, Trev. Uh, right. Hope the weather is good for your walk. Yeah. See you around, Trev. What do you want me to do about it? Well, Victor went down into the sewers while I was getting stuff out of the truck. When I came back, well, I was about to climb down there, but I, I heard these awful screams. They went on and on, and then they just you know, stopped. I, I froze up, nearly shit myself, to be honest. I, I don't know what to do, but I can't go down there. Not after that. The problem is probably something basic. A clock that needs to be cleared, something like that. Restarting the pump should take care of it, but in no goddamn way am I going in there. If you do the job for me, I'll give you the new one we were paid for it. I don't need it. You can have it all. I can live without money, but someone's got to fix those pumps before I can live. Before I can leave. Why does he look so hunched over and in agony and in pain? Is that the only thing that's wrong? He's probably scared more than anything. Eh, probably. And he looked, you know, it's like, those fists, they look able. <laughs> I can use those fists. <laughs> How many new you know we're talking about here? 500. For a job this quick, and it's good money. Eh, if we can get it over within a few minutes, yeah. then why not? Why not? Fine, I'll do it. You're a lifesaver, Chummer. If you find Victor, well, if he's still alive down there, tell him I'm sorry. Alright then. Let's give it a save. Oh, you remember to save! I'm learning. <laughs> Alright, enter the sewers. Uh, did you hear that? Is that soon? He's actually learning. He remembered to say. Alright, I don't think I will need any deckers with me. So, Blitz, you can stay at home. I will take Glory with me. I will take Dietrich with me. And I will also take Iger with me. By the way, Baron, the clit strap is working. So it shouldn't be a distraction to any of you down there. Yeah, that's, good. that's good for you. <laughs> I better be getting paid for this, Baron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think I might have bitten my tongue in one of those voices. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, I guess that's also say, oh, they grow so fast. <laughs> mm -hmm. 